Hello and welcome to the latest video. This one's about how I got involved in the music business, which is a very strange story. It's a very long story, so if you're not into long stories from me, you might want to look away now. Right then, back in 1972, I went to college in Chelmsford. The Victorian writer Charles Dickens called Chelmsford the dullest and most stupid place on earth. Who am I to argue with Charlie? It's very complicated because I went to a place called Mid-Essex Technical College. It's now um, not called that, it's now the University of East Anglia or something. No, it's not. It's something anyway. And it was back then a technical college, but I was in the law faculty, which was doing a law degree the University of London and it was a very big law department there were a lot of people came out of that and I met barristers afterwards who had been there and all those things so it was quite a major thing but it was very strange because it was in Chelmsford and Mid-Essex Technical College there was a big art department a lot of potters and a lot of painters and things and photographers and all sorts of things like that but then there were also a lot of bricklayers and builders so it's a very broad spectrum of people there so and it was very strange because like the law department tended to mix with the law department we did mix a bit with the art people yes we did mix with the art people actually think about it, especially the female art people but didn't mix much with the bricklayers mainly because there weren't too many women in bricklayers in 1972. So anyway, I went to Chelmsford and I started off living in a house up on a housing estate because Chelmsford, if you know it, back then, it's the same now because I've hardly been back since. I did go back for a nostalgic trip, but generally speaking, I don't know what, it, what it's like now. But back then, there were basically two housing estates on, I think it was the east and the west of Chelmsford. And I lived to start with in a house. I was put in a house on one of these housing estates, the one on this side, which I'm not sure what it's called, actually Melbourne or something was it? I don't know. But, and the landlord was this um, very strange middle-aged man, probably about 40, 50 maybe, very thin, I seem to remember, wore thick glasses, classic psychopath nothing, nothing, nothing. type of guy. He was very disappointed because he'd asked for four women come and live in his house, four female students, and he got four men. So he made this quite obvious that he wasn't very pleased and he kept moaning about it, so we had to go. So basically, halfway through the first term, there were four students stuck with nowhere to live. So the college authorities checked out and made us, and I ended up in this house in Rittle, which is a little village outside at Chelmsford. Very picturesque, lovely village green. But again, we were on a, um, like a, concreted housing estates I think in this on the edge of this little village called Riddle and I was in a house with all the other students in the house were like final year law students so I was like the newbie first term etc and I was with these guys and because we were in a village don't worry I am getting to how I got into the music business it's all part of it and if you don't know this then it doesn't make a lot of sense anyway because we're in a village on the edge of Chelmsford um, and I think the last bus from Chelmsford was about 8 o'clock at night or, or something except on Fridays and Saturdays when it was like 10 o'clock or something so anyway it meant that we used to drink in the railway tavern in Chelmsford which is where the students drank with Les the landlord but because we were in this village we spent a lot of time socializing in the village of riddle i think there were two pubs like one could have been the red little lion that rings a bell and i think and there was one which was like very posh and very conservative and didn't like students and so we made a point of going there quite a lot of i seem to recall so anyway we were with these i was with these guys and i got a very quick education i immediately went from my being a very naive boy who was brought up in the wilds of Yorkshire and then the wilds of Wales and I ended up like with these fairly sophisticated third year law students who incidentally introduced me to people like Captain Beefheart and all these other things. They were much more avant-garde than the people I normally mixed with because like so the people I normally mixed with in the first year we were more into David Bowie and slightly left field but nothing to that but these guys were into like hardcore like miles davis captain beefheart so i got a, an immediate immersion into that world which was a great my eye 
But thing is though, I was still like the very much junior member of this of this little family because all their friends obviously were older than me and they were all like to me to my 18 year old eyes they were all very sophisticated thinking back in it they're only probably in the very early 20s but there was a guy called Gottlieb who'd been a law student who dropped out and had gone to India and he'd been to India he'd gone overland to India and he'd come back again and he'd lived in India for a long time in Afghanistan and he was very exotic to me and he became one of my friends and so it was all very exciting and anyway let's get back to the point of this video at the time there was the election for the various student union posts president of the union vice president social secretary etc and at the time there were some ex-students who'd basically formed a company to put on the entertainments at the college because there was a very good sports hall like a um, gym which held about 500 people so it was a very good venue and there was a stage which you could which was dismantled and so they'd actually tr somehow managed to transfer this into into a private company which wasn't very popular with the with the rest of the students but they wanted to go back into student hands. The person who was elected social secretary basically decided what sort of music would be booked. So they bet amongst themselves that an unknown first year student, i.e. me, could win, could beat the guy who was standing, who'd been the social secretary for two years. I think his name was Steve, I can't remember. But he was in this consortium with these other guys. One was, which was John Fogarty, and the other one was Leo Pimlot, I think was president. So there you go. So this guy Steve was standing as the social secretary. So they nominated me to stand as a social secretary. Now, as you bear in mind that nobody knew who I was apart from these guys, because I was obviously a first year student who was just keeping my head down and just just in awe of all the things, all the exciting things going on around me. So anyway, cut long story short, I got elected social secretary. And for some reason, I don't know what happened, I expected them to take charge of me really and um, direct me what to book, but frankly they just let me get on with it. This is how I got into it. I just, um, I was an avid reader of the enemy and the murder maker and all that and the thing, so I quickly got into it all and I got, oh, and there were lists of all the agents like, I think there was a file with all the agents and the old addresses in. So I just basically went through all the agencies and, and rang them all up. And I went to London actually and met with some of them. They, uh, and I let them take me out for drinks and take me to London and things. I had a budget from the student union of X amount per term. And basically I had to spend it. The way that it worked is that if your shows went well, then you made money on the show, so you had more money to spend. At the end of the year, it was good to, if not spend all of it, not have a lot left, because then the next term, when the when the treasurer, who even though it's a an electorate student, they tend to be like the Chancellor of the Exchequer, and they tend to be business people, business study students. They then think, well, if he managed last year to make do without any budget, we could save that and give that to something else. So you've, so, so, you've, so anyway, these are the politics of it all. First show I ever did was the third year band who just had a hit. They'd done the music for Ronan Polanski's film of Macbeth and it was very dark and very, it wasn't your average bop. It, it definitely wasn't Susie Quattro or Sweet or T-Rex or anything like that. It was very dark and moody, and even though it was very high profile at the time, and I got them quite cheap, I think I paid them £125 or £175, so it was quite cheap, but we sold out because it was very high profile. But I must say that they played for two, they were very turned up, very, very good musicians and all that, they were fantastic people. We got on well, I fed them and things and gave them drinks and things, and they seemed to be quite happy. But for a Friday night juice show, it wasn't ex exactly your Friday night knees up. That's how I got into the music business. There you go. And thank you for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, 
God knows why, but if you did, you will like a lot of my other videos. They're a mixture of this kind of thing, my reminiscences of 50 years in the music business, together with walks around. I'm starting with my home area because I now live in Ramsgate, so I'm doing walks in Ramsgate and Margate and various other things. I tend to extend it outside. I don't want to do too much in London, even though I spent a lot of time in London and wrote about it for Time Out and things. Um, because there's a guy called John Rogers, I don't know if you know him. But we get a glimpse of the Moselle up here, I believe, according to Tom Bolton in his book, Lost Rivers of London, or London's Lost Rivers, I can never remember which, but I'll put an image of said book on the screen. He does very good walking videos of London and they'd be hard to beat or even equal them. So I might do things that are not the same as what he's doing. So anyway, thank you for watching. If you liked it, please like it down below. Subscribe, press the notification bell, that always helps. And comment down below, let me know what you think. And I hope you will enjoy the next video. And thank you for watching. Goodbye. Now is the time to yield us up. Oh, yield it me. And now is the time to win the way. Until we meet again. The summer sun we do. Goodbye, goodbye. Pop, 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 pop,